Yeah, on that note, you know, you've uh, you've said before, and I'm paraphrasing that something like we're at the dawn of the open source era, um, and you've explained how we've evolved, um, how uh, how the open source thinking has evolved. Can you just e explain what what you mean by we're at the dawn of the open source era? You know, each each era starts out by imitating what went before it. So, you know, movies started out as film stage plays. So the, the, the original idea was, oh, we can, we can put on the stage play uh, in five cities at the same time, uh, and we don't have to pay the actors, right? Um, in the same way, open source started out by kind of imitating what had gone before it and, and uh, knocking off in a sense or, or substituting for what had gone before it. But I think the true dawn of an era comes when people start to really express the new thing by doing things that you just couldn't even have dreamed of doing in, in the old way, right? Uh, taking the camera outside, well, you, you couldn't do that with, with a stage play, right? Uh, and so in a sense, it's really only, I think in the last 10 years that you've started to see um, um, the production of software by non-software vendors as a first-class thing. Um, you know, the first wave of open source was software perfectionists, people who were so good at the software, um, but so frustrated in their day job that they would then spend their evenings and weekends crafting perfect software. And that's really, you know, when many of us kind of fell in love with open source because it was all amateur, but it was amazing, right? There was not that much of it, but it was, it was amazing. And, and then we went through an era where essentially software companies started essentially building obvious software solutions that matched proprietary things, uh, MySQL, Oracle, uh, Red Hat Linux, you know, Windows, Solaris, right? Um, but the, 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 the real dawn of the open source era came when, in fact, lots of different businesses who didn't see themselves as software vendors, but who had something important to do or to contribute in software, embraced open source as a way to both collaborate and compete and uh, contest. And so today, you know, if you're running an airline, you can get software from a social media company, right? That's not trying to sell you software but they have a need and you can collaborate. And that's a profoundly, profoundly different world, right? So if I look at what people do with Ubuntu today, it is a giant bank that is essentially integrating software from an airline and a railway company and a radio company, you know, a streaming media company to make a better bank. Uh, and Canonical plays this really interesting role of, of serving you know, the interests of the bank, but also the interests of the airline company and railway company and the social media company, right? They all have interests that don't involve selling software. Um, and so we've positioned ourselves to be an essential partner effectively to those different players in the ecosystem. Um, they benefit enormously for free because Ubuntu is on very unusual commercial terms, not entirely for free or we couldn't be sustainable, there are places where we do essentially um, assert rights uh, and, and claim fees. Um, and there are services that we're uniquely, you know, provided to place or uh, place to provide in that, in that ecosystem. But it's a much bigger story than an operating system, right? Ubuntu is obviously the anchor and, and a critical piece of that. But what people do with it using open source is is much broader than what you would traditionally have done with a Solaris or a, or a Windows, right? And that's because we're really expressing the, the fullness of what's happening in open source sort of content creation. 